Hi, my name's Grace and this is what I like to do in my free time. Synchronization is a beautiful thing. Okay, hold on. Okay, now that we can all think clearly, synchronization is one of the most common phenomenons in nature and honestly in society and biology as it is. It's incredibly important to how humans function and how our world functions. It happens on a super tiny cellular molecule level and it also happens when you see fish swimming throughout the ocean. So today we're going to play with this phenomenon that has baffled physicists for over 300 years, spontaneous synchronization. It's what causes bridges to collapse Apps, metronomes that spontaneously sync up and for clocks to lose time when they're out on the ocean. Now I've always been a hands-on learner. I watched an awesome video by Veritasium where he explained spontaneous synchronization but I had to check it out for myself. So we have a plank of wood, we have some metronomes, and we have some cans that's going to help us conduct this experiment. And we're also going to explore how spontaneous synchronization exists in other places in the world. I mean it even fires off in your neurons in your brain and that's actually what causes epilepsy is when all those neurons fire at the exact same time and spontaneously sync up. Spontaneous synchronization was first found by Christian Huygens. Um, he was a Dutch physicist and he found this by using two pendulum clocks. He was trying to figure out basically how he could, in case you're wondering, our workbench is not level whatsoever. But anyway, so Christian Huygens discovered this because he was setting up clocks so he could figure out time on the sea. They were basically using latitude and longitude and they would set the clock at a certain time when they left and they would also run the clock and they discovered that there was basically a synchronization that was happening when these clocks were next to each other. And it was the first time it was ever recognized. And so from there, spontaneous synchronization was discovered. And he ran the test multitudes of times and almost every time, about 30 minutes, when the clocks were on the same surface, they would sync up. So other physicists were like, ha ha ha, we must try this ourselves and figure out what's happening here. Now, spontaneous synchronization is still kind of like a misnomer and it's kind of still inconclusive because it just happens. Fireflies actually do it. So they will spontaneously start synchronizing their flashes when they're, uh, you know, hanging out in trees and in fields and stuff. So you can actually witness this happening in nature. And something we're gonna do at the end of this video is put it to test in nature and try it out for ourselves on a swing set. So we have a board, we have some metronomes, and before I let these metronomes go and do their tick tocky clankety clank thing, um, what you're going to see is you're going to see the board move. So you're going to see the board start to send momentum. So two of them are potentially going to sync up and you're going to see the board shift. And as that shifting energy is happening, one of the metronomes is either going to slow down or speed up to catch up with the other ones. So you're going to see the energy shifted through these boards as it's changing the mechanical energy in these metronomes. I love this. I'm, I mean, I'm a giant nerd as it is, but being able to do this hands-on is beautiful. And it's a beautiful representation of how science works in the world. Okay, so because I want to see them tick faster, we're going to run this one more time and I'm going to move these all the way down here to presto. Something really fast. <laughs> Do you see the one over there? It's like slowing down. The energy is all over the place. So the crazy thing about spontaneous synchronization is it can take up to 30 seconds to two minutes to a whole night if you're a firefly for it to happen. shift on the board it's very small but you can see it keeping time okay that was fantastic so we were able to see spontaneous synchronization actually happen now one of the questions I have is that can it happen with an even number of metronomes this odd number makes sense because if you have an odd number you're gonna have two that are syncing up more and you're gonna send more momentum that way and more energy back this way to sync this last one up my question is, if you have four, will two sync up on one side and two sync up on the other, or will they all sync up together? These two sound like they're together. Weird. It's like they're waving, and they're like windshield wipers going in and out, but they're synced up, right? Yeah. That's so unique. See, this is what I was curious about, is if like each side would sync up to the other. This one really wants to be with these guys. It's almost there. Okay, let's see if this last one can get it. 
It's on the same, it's just going the opposite direction. The board's moving a little bit more. No, not a ton, just like a little bit more than it was before. These two are together now. This one wants to be with them. It's always the last one. The inside and outside are, like the two insides and then the two outsides are synced. And they're waving again. Waving seems to be the ideal condition when there's four. Okay, there it is. They're all synced, but the other one's going the other way. Yeah. But that's so interesting because I pulled these two the same direction, you know? Yeah. I want to try them out here together, and then I want to try them in here together and see if that makes a difference. Look at the board move. Whoa, that was fast. It was way faster. Big wiggles, big wiggles, big wiggles. Now those three are synced, and this one over here is just doing his own thing. This is what I was wondering would happen is if we move them all to the sides, they'll have the same energy and momentum pushing each other inward and outward, and so there's no transfer. Oh, all right, one more experiment to run here. We're gonna move these metronomes to the outside of the board. Rewind them all because they ran out of their energy. Big movement. Yeah, the board is really going. <laughs> it is moving. I feel like there's a struggle of power here. It's like they're high-fiving. It seems that there's always three. And then there's a fourth man that's kind of out. You got the two on the right high-fiving and the two on the left. Just... Fan waving. Yeah. Look at that board move though. Yeah, it's really moving. <laughs> they're opposite. Weird! Which makes sense though, they have to be opposite. Yeah. They're opposite and equal. Yeah. Wow. And the momentum is carrying. Yeah. But that just shows you like me moving this board synchronizes them. If I stop, they go back. It's that energy that moves the board that puts the metronomes on the same path. I love this so much. Um, to show the energy movement, I have one more thing to show you all, and it involves the Newton cradles, um, because I feel like the Newton cradles are just a great representation of how energy moves through a system. So, I'm going to take these cradles, set them right above the cans. We're only going to move one set of the cradles, and we're gonna see if we can get the other side to move. So I'm gonna let this like, chill. Okay, so we've let them chill. Everything is neutral and standard, so I'm gonna move this one side, and we're gonna see what happens to those over there. Because of the motion of this board, it causes those to move. Now let's see if they'll sync up at all. I just think it's so cool how you can see the energy move like to that other set over there that's completely still. I just think it's so cool they interact together on this surface, but if we were to set them down on this surface right here, like the workbench, they wouldn't interact with one another or affect the momentum of each other at all. Now expect those over there to spontaneously start hitting the other ones, but there's still energy being transferred through that system. Now, this original experiment was done with clocks and pendulums. So, we've done it with the metronomes, but I want to see if we can get two pendulums to swing at the exact same time. So, I have some stools right here, and so they're going to be on the same plane. Okay, so we're going to take this gaff tape, and we're going to tape it to this board right here. So Huygens, who patented the pendulum clocks, had two clocks set on the same surface and noticed within half an hour to two hours they would swing away and towards one another. So we're gonna let that happen, but we're gonna use just pendulums here. And because I wanna go to the park, we're gonna set up a time lapse and see if that happens and then we'll show you once we're done at the park because we're gonna go swing on swings and make our own pendulums ourselves. We're at a park. We have located the swing set and ready to swing. There are children here actively playing on this playground. <laughs> okay, so we have the same contraption set up. We have the post, we're gonna be on the same 
plane, we have what's holding us so like our energy can move through the swings. Uh, have you ever heard of swing sisters or like when you're swinging on the swing and you sync up with somebody? Yep spontaneous synchronization you guys are helping each other swing in the same momentum and then you sync up and you stay on that same swing pattern and you'll look at the pole and you'll see the pole move forward and backwards if you're on a cheap one that's not really structured and sound to the ground this one looks very sound and well constructed so it probably won't move but that being said the energy is still going to transfer and move through the swing <laughs> when was the last time you swing on a swing I don't know. <laughs> do you remember how <laughs> you can like feel the thing like moving. Oh. Structurally so. Oh. It's getting close. It's getting close and I'm not changing anything. Not either. We're just swinging. <laughs> it's crazy because I'm not changing anything, but I can feel like some of them aren't as big as like others. Yeah. Oh, we are there. It is it is so close! <laughs> Spontaneous synchronization in real Whoa. life! <laughs> Look at us swinging! We are swinging! <laughs> We're swinging at the same time! And we started on opposites! Look at us synchronizing! Oh, and now what happens if we like don't move our legs and just like, but it's still coming back every now and then. Yeah. Oh yeah, you want to see if we can spontaneously jump? Synchronized jump. All right. This is great. Yeah, ready? Yeah. One. Oh, we are though. Two. Are we jumping on three? Uh, this one. Right okay, okay, okay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Josh and I just turned ourselves into pendulums and it was awesome to be able to see that happen in real life. So now next time you know that when you sync up with someone on a swing because you guys are hanging in pendulums from a metal or wooden surface, you know you're syncing up because of spontaneous synchronization and the momentum being pushed from your momentum into the other person so it syncs up. Honestly, that was so gnarly and fun to experience that like in real life, but we have one more experiment We need to go check on back at the studio and see how it came out because that is the original OG experiment that discovered spontaneous synchronization Okay, so we're back at the studio and our pendulums have stopped swinging But our GoPro footage shows that they actually did their in and out thing at the very end Which is perfect because it just goes to show that spontaneous synchronization is happening And it just wasn't a fluke thing that happened in the 17th century Guys, if you want to know more about spontaneous synchronization, make sure you check out Veritasium's video It's phenomenal. He does a fantastic job explaining it and going into deep depth about the bridge that collapsed And if you want to check out another T-Core video Make sure you check it out right over here and if you really want to and if you want to get more of me and you want to get more Josh and the energy we had on the swing, make sure you check out the podcast. It's called The Random Theory and it's fantastic.